really trying to do is to make sure we can get to every one of our partners in the area and make sure we have opportunities to impact their ministries for the cause of Christ. So we're running medical um, evangelism and clinics at every location. We're going to be running VBSs at every location to make them as attractive to their local community as possible. And so that's really our goal. We're living in a broken world. A broken world won't give you any answers. Everything is upside down. Wrong is right and right is wrong, but not for long. No, not for long. This broken world is cradled by our Savior. Nothing here can take him by surprise. Someday all this hurting will be over. And every tear's been wiped away and dry. But for now, we're living in a broken world. But not for long. No, not for long. So many children in a small room and there were so few of us in comparison and we started to pass out uh, the craft for our VBS and it just became a mob scene and kids there you know we were trying to have lines and have them come up one at a time and that didn't work and everybody started pushing in and got to be quite crazy we're living in a broken world and a broken world won't give you Everything is upside down Wrong is right and right is wrong But not for long No, not for long This broken world is cradled by our Savior And nothing here can take him by surprise Someday me to look at her child's rash well I knew we didn't have anything I looked at it um but I couldn't do anything you know we didn't have any medicine or anything for her so instead I asked if I could pray for the child and so I did and that just she thanked me and I I just that's when you can't do anything else just praying helps you know because God can and God I prayed that God would bring someone to their lives that can help this little baby And nothing here can take him by surprise Someday all this hurting will be over And every tear's been wiped away and dry But for now, we're living in a broken world But not for long thought I'd never experience that again and then I experienced that again today um, so when you see that chaos and you feel that chaos it's hard to explain it to somebody who's never gone through it um, or felt those emotions and that uncontrolled feeling that you have and when you're there to share who Christ is there 
There's a place in your heart And I know that it is love And this place be much brighter than tomorrow And if you really try You'll find there's no need to cry In this place you feel there's no hurt or sorrow There are ways to get there If you care enough for the living Make a little space Make a better place Heal the world Make it a better place For you and for me And the entire human race There are people dying If you care enough for the living Make a better place for you strong and only cares for joy for giving if we try we shall see in this bliss we cannot feel there are dream we stop existing and start living then it feels that always love's enough for us growing Didn't have much sleep last night, but um, kind of got up and got rallied. And you know, once you get in front of people that are interested in what you're saying, uh, it, it really makes it a lot easier. so excited about this training it helped me a lot and also helped the participants it helped our leaders and they all going home with happiness oh i am praying and hoping that as i learn this today tomorrow i'm going to implement that and also be a good example in the community to also keep the other people how the role of leadership is important in one's life.
Our prayer is that this should not be the end. It should continue with life for some curse the same mission like mission team like this to Liberia to have a church to conduct leadership training for us. It has been a great help for us today. in the hospital um, in Ganta and I didn't really know what to expect um, I mean I thought about it a little bit but just seeing the hospital and how that all worked and everything it was really cool to see I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine yeah. Surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Imagine when that day comes And I find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I would do is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine, yeah Only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you, Jesus Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing and hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I need your strength, dear Lord. Don't let me down. Say, look at me, look at me, look at me. Oh Lord, you have some prayer. We so much strength. Don't let me down. You know, just the need that they have. 
that comes so easily for us to get medical care, but the need that they have, and they for it, but they don't have access to it. medicine a your tea brush two piece and put something in our ear the field and giving medicine to people and helping the poor and I like it so much. We don't really have eye doctors in this country. We, we don't really have majority of them. You only find ordinary doctors around, but you don't really find people specializing in those particular areas. So I really want to try my best to be one of those doctors that will specialize in such area. so fantastic because uh, most of these children you are seeing they are so eager they are so happy to see visitors coming giving them toothpaste two brushes and warm medicine that was so great and fantastic
that you can't get over it. It's so low that you can't get under it. It's so wide that you can't get air on it. Oh, wonderful love. We have a good relationship because your team is one that kept up here. Like the department we have in, like our schooling and other things, the joy myself going through um, your team. They, they have a well good relationship with all. We like to make our guests feel happy, to feel at home. So I just enjoy having people in my home. We enjoy that. When we were in the Avery course, every day and night, at one point we had over 30 persons in our home. Yes, in a refugees camp. We were refugees too, but we had people in our home and, you know, as they come, midnight, I would get up and cook, you know, talk with them, make them the feel at home. I just love, we just love having people in our home. I can't wait for all the Suncrest people to come and be here with us. Someday, we love it. Educational reform. We need some kind of reform in our educational system. Because of the war, we, we have had a breakdown in our system, school system. Uh, children, our children go to school and we're not too sure, we're not so sure if they are getting what they're supposed to get. Teachers are underpaid and because they are underpaid, they want to get that money from students, whether they are they are doing well in school, but so long they can pay money, then they are passing, and that's not helping them. It's just all over, okay. all over. We, we'd like to see some improvement. I would say we love you so much. Thank you for everything with all God first, and you, plus many others, we wouldn't have been here. So we give God the glory for you all. We love you, and we continue to be in touch with you. Continue to pray for us because it's not easy to live here nowadays in post-war Liberia. So keep us in your prayer. We love you. We we'll pray for you too. And God bless you all. What I'd like to say is that uh, we are so thankful, so grateful to God first and then to the Son Christ family. I think uh, if you look at your history, we are your first missionary family and it's interesting that you have never forgotten us you have continued to support the ministry here whether you hear from us or not you know we are here you know we are doing ministry and with all the kind of support we receive from you being out with our children wouldn't be able to be here you will hear different things maybe be and then are out of the ministry but because of that kind of support We've been able to live here. We can send our children to school. When they are sick, we send them to the hospital for medical checkup and things like that. Uh, we eat regularly. Uh, that's because of that support. Not only financial support, but we know people are praying for us. When Linnea was involved in that accident that nearly killed her, uh, we realized that people in America, other congregations, different congregations were just praying and praying. And if you see her tomorrow, you will know that that's an answer to prayer. When you are here, you know, our church benefit from it. The training, the teaching, because we can't do it all. We need you to help us. And they have been elected to represent us, to speak on our behalf. We got nothing other than absolutely. So we are dying here slowly, I must admit. I'm proud to be a Liberian because this is where Jehovah God had me to find myself. And so I'm proud to be a Liberian, but I want to be in the number to carry on development, to be able to help my nation, to be able to transform the lives of those who are lost. The lost sheep must be formed. So I'm proud to be a Liberian. I would like to see this town to be changed to a modern land where we have a radio station, where we have a sewer system to be laid out, where we have an electrification being uh, to cover the entire uh, area, 
where we have communication to be effective. I will love, I will love that. I will appreciate that if God can only make it possible for us. There are a lot of churches, but I believe in God. And we fully aware that indeed, when God's words have taken course, the people's lives will be transformed for the better. That's my conviction. That's my vision. So I decided to run a nursery school free of charge to bring in the kids and help it. Since I was a teacher, to help. And then God provided people that came and they taught us in the workshop. So it was an opportunity. And they left some materials. So I started the nursery school. And then after we went a year, you know, it got so fascinating. They, they were impressed. They said, well, what my kid never used to do, they are doing it. And so we want you to step up. And so that's how we started the school. And then I had some, the parent came, they say I'm going somewhere, I will come back, and they never came back. That's how it's looking. And some of them will come to school, they do not have school fees, so I will have to, you know, be, play the motherly role, and take the parent, you know, role, and then put them into the school to really get an education. And while doing that, kids now would prefer to come to says Joy School, then they go up there. That's why when you come, we open our arms because we are all working towards the one goal. And I feel you have something that when you share, that kid might be impressed and come to my church because what you have done. So we try to be somehow open up to Christianity because we are not many. And we can't claim and say because we are assemblies of God, so we can't partner with this. We are all believers. That is what Pastor told me. Yeah. So that's what we do. Those that are here with me, the parents do not come around. They do not visit them. They do not have time. That's one thing I saw in the culture. If they leave their kids with you, they don't bother to ask you. So it's like it, they essentially abandon their kids. <laughs> yes, it's like it's all yours. You 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 accept that, then so you can take them. I am an educator. I love children, and so when I see Muslim kids coming to school, it's like I want to go to heaven. I am so happy that I am able to serve Muslim kids to know about Jesus Christ. And when they are reciting their Bible verses, I am so happy. Well, I would like to say to them that we appreciate whatever they are doing and whatever you are doing, putting your funds together and resources to see that we Liberians, we experience what you are experiencing. We know it's not very easy to leave your comfort zone and come. We know, we know how it feels. I know how it, it felt when I came here. And I know what it takes for you to ride hours and come just to, you know, see us and so concerned about us. So I appreciate them highly. And I pray that they will help us to hold on, to really press forward and do the things that God wants us to do. Because it's one thing to really hear what you do and see those things. And it's another thing to work at what God wants us to do. Yesterday when you people came in, it was a wonderful work that the Lord did yesterday. The Muslims were so happy. They were filled with joy. Because of the charity you people did, holding them. Since I came, some come like neighbor demons. If I when I'm having prayer, they come to the back and they come for prayer. The war affected all. We can't hardly go to the church. They were wanting to go kill me now. Then one man, the pastor of the church that I was visiting, and the pastor went there and talked with the people. Say, what is the thing the woman do? He do do nothing. Why you all want to go kill her for? Then the man said, she free. But before free, my late brother, myself, was in jail. They kept my brother in front of me. Once in a lifetime, come, uh, Christ is doing a great thing in, in the Muslim community. And you know that that's one of our focus, the, the focus of the church in, in the world now, Muslim community. And, and, and this place is very felt out. Very felt out, ready to receive Christ. And you could be the one to make a difference just by coming in. For you people, we have been praying that God will allow people from different nations to come, that we all fellowship the love of God together. I will only say hello, thank you. I want for America to help me with my church. This is the important. I want the church, the hospital, and the school. That's what I want. And I will say that. And then you will see the Bible 
you know, on another side, be different, different from your culture. And when you go back, you, you, you have, you have a, a, a different view positively about what Christ is doing in America and what Christ is doing in Africa and like New York. And then you always want to come because our people here are welcoming, lovely, and you know, they will be a great, great encouragement to you. So I just want to thank you people very much for the hard work, the love you people show to us here in Liberia in Bible Faith. May God richly bless you people. And I pray that you should continue. have a log that went across this river but they had to pull out the log when they try to build a new bridge so they've built this temporary structure out of bamboo and I of course feel perfectly safe walking across this thing it has a little give to it but something out of Gilligan's Island huh? The work that they're doing here is multifaceted. We're gonna see the rubber trees here in just a little bit. We'll see a medical clinic where they used to care for people in their community. But here they're building classrooms. And Edward, you said in these classrooms, yeah, it's going to be four, four classrooms, uh, somewhat for vocational training. You're gonna train uh, adults and young adults in certain trades. Yeah. So this will be a, am I understanding you right to say, it'll be a school, yeah. kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third yeah, grade, yeah. but then also utilized for the vocational yeah, yeah. training. Yes, I mean, when it case of need, then the other will come. Okay. We plan a job plan to be. One of the things I've always been impressed with is your resourcefulness. Yeah. That to utilize everything that you have yeah. and find the right purpose for it. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is the medical clinic. This is all right, we're in the True Life Medical Clinic here, and uh, we've got to meet the nurse, Doris, who takes care of things. This is actually the delivery room where we deliver babies, and Doris just told me that she delivers the babies herself right here. So, uh, you know, humble circumstances, but definitely well kept and well done, and appreciate it. Now, how does it work here, Edward, when people can't afford oh, to we, pay? We, we, we have classes of people. Mm -hmm. When you don't no have, when you come here, we help you. Okay. Yes, we don't just let them go free. Right. No one will turn away. No. And it, this is a true life clinic. Mm -hmm. Now what is it for? To win people to Christ. And then to show love to others. Yes. I, I love that about this place, the name True Life. We, this is about bringing life here, but true life is in Christ. Yes. And you want to introduce people to that. Yes. A couple of years ago, uh, when we visited, we asked what one of their needs was, and they mentioned they needed tile for their bathrooms and for their kitchen. And so Suncrest was able to provide the funds to purchase this tile and, and meet one of their needs. This is the way some of their dwellings work. This is where the one of the pastors lives. So they keep the dwelling separate from the kitchen, so that when they do the cooking, they can kind of do it in the open air under a roof, but it is separate from the dwelling area. So just the pretty common conditions that are around this part of Liberia.
Are these pineapple? Yeah, pineapple. I've been a woman, is it? So it's the rainy season in Liberia and we're standing here at the farm of the rubber trees that Suncrest has helped to support a little bit in order to bring sustainability to spreading the gospel here. Let me tell you the story of the farm just a little bit. Uh, you'll probably get to see and maybe hear from uh, Edward Williams, he's been a wonderful leader of this project. And back in 2007, they found this land and they cleared the land and began to plant rubber trees the next year. So these trees that stand bes beside me and behind me are rubber trees that were planted around 2008. So they've grown this much in four years. They were just a shoot in the ground when they started. Um, we've provided some fertilizer for them along the way to try to help with the growth of this uh, rubber tree farm. Now you may not understand what rubber trees are so I'll give you a quick description. Uh, with these trees um, the way you get the rubber out of them is you tap them much like you would tap a tree for maple syrup and so these aren't prepared to be tapped yet they need to be about seven or eight years old before they're tapped and begin to produce uh, that syrup but uh, they're well on their way to that and then once they uh, are ready to be tapped they can be tapped every day year after year and it will provide a nice income for the ministry to help support the churches that are at work here. One of the beautiful parts for me is that as the farm develops it also provides work for some of the people in this ministry and I've seen them uh, work harder than anyone I've ever seen before so I'm very thankful for this ministry. <laughs> I just got myself wet. I said Joel, the only thing we ought to do is to put up a life tree that will serve us. Yes. Pepper can be washed away, but a tree, a plant tree cannot wash away. Mm -hmm. Water can wash away plant tree, it can wash away rubber tree. And rubber is making money in our country. He said that's a good vision. Do you know how many trees you have planted? Oh yes, well, roughly 6,000, 6,600 plus. Edward and I are standing right next to one of our rubber trees right here. How old is this rubber tree? Well, this rubber tree is almost uh, three years plus. It's about three years old. It started as just a shoot in the ground. Yes. And talk to me about, you know, how it grows and when you can tap it and things like that. So rubber is not just one month, not two years, not three years. It goes 20, 30, 40 years. 20, 30, 40 years yes. worth of production. Yes. yes. So. Yes. It's not, it's not for... It's not for 10, not for 10 years, no. <laughs> it's a low range plan. All right. So you want to be able to sell the rubber when the price is high. Yeah, but <laughs> what do you think, Greg? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I want you to sell the rubber when well, the price is high. Price is high. <laughs> we have to carry the gospel. We need money. Mm -hmm. We have to use vehicles. We need to pay our pastor. We need to give them home. We need to teach them. We, they need to be trained. They need to go to college yes. so they can be able to really represent Christ. You have to be equipped. Yes. So that is our main goal. So things are going well. So thank you very much, Greg. Oh. I thank your church. God bless the church. Yes. Uh, I'm I really happy that you're here to see for yourself what we're doing with your money you're sending here. Well, thank you very much. Yes. I know yes. it's a blessing to us to yes. have partners like you yes. in this country. Yes. All right, so we just visited the farm, but look at this. It's a rainy season. It came down on us pretty good. I had my umbrella on, but not much help. And now our dilemma is we're going to have to drive back to Monrovia over the same muddy roads that we came on. And we weren't sure if we were going to get here. So the trip home, uh, question mark, I'd say at this point. trees have been one of the biggest uh, aspects of economic development in Liberia and Firestone actually has a million acre plantation here so we stopped so you could see some of the older rubber trees you can see over here the cups that hang on the side of the rubber tree so that's being tapped right now you might actually get to see it drip right into the cup I don't know if the camera's that good but it's pretty amazing how these trees you know year after year after year will continue to produce uh, rubber through the tap